Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I am Canadian from West Coast Canada in Victoria, capital city of British Columbia near Vancouver. Hi Awaz, hi Yura, hi Parmar, good to see students in this class. Hi Kyber. Again, in this class, we are looking at IELTS speaking part two, the cue card. We will uh, talk about some strategies for the cue card and then go through an example together. While we wait for some more of your fellow students, a little bit about us, this class is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com, where you can find loads of videos practice exams, and lots and lots of help to increase your band scores for the academic IELTS. For the general, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. Just real quick, uh, let's take a peek at those sites. Uh, this is the academic site here at aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join the premium package. And for the general version, it's the green background, and you can click that big red button there to join the premium package. Hi, Carolina. Good to see you in this class. Missed you in the previous members chat class. I hope you're doing well. All right. And uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com about our products or about the IELTS exam. You can get our books from Amazon. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS on Amazon as well. Uh, a couple of quick notes. I never said this before, but you can also find some of our materials on Udemy and uh, also on Hello English as well. So you can find us in a lot of different places on the internet. Quite popular. We've helped thousands of students improve their band scores. Uh, okay, students, so today, uh, speaking part two, this is the last class for this week. Uh, we will continue IELTS live streaming next week on Wednesday, okay? So that will be Wednesday the uh, 19th. All right, so uh, let's take a look at today's part two question. Here we go. Uh, part two, this is a speaking class, so be sure to speak and repeat what you hear and repeat what I say. Okay, so speak, speak, speak as much as you can. Hi, Eugene. I love the cowboy hat, happy face with the panda combination. That's great. All right. Raja Mani, come. Good luck on your speaking exam this Thursday. Uh, here is our cue card. So cue card comes after part one. Uh, you have completed part one in the interview. You're feeling good. You're confident. You're calm. You're speaking in full sentences. And the examiner says that is the end of part one. Now for part two, here's a cue card with some questions on it. You will have one minute to look at the questions, think about your answer. Here's some note paper and a pencil. You can take notes if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Your one minute preparation time begins now. And so um, you uh, turn over the card and uh, this is what you see. So you see this talk about a place you went to often as a child. So that's your um, topic, your controlling idea. Michael Fan says, sir, your hair is standing in an oblique direction. Is my hair going all crazy again? Sometimes it does that, Michael. Um, all right. Um, so... <laughs> Put a smile on my face though, Michael, I must say. Um, all right, so then you read the card carefully. Uh, you read the card carefully, so you read this part here. What is this place or what this place is? Uh, where is it located? What can people do there? Why you went there as a child and how do you feel about it now? So these are the sub 
questions. Um, what should I do before I start thinking about my answer? What's my first step here? So what's a really good idea to do? My unk, I will allow your contact information. Just make sure not to share personal information, okay? There you go. All right. So Kevin Bowie says, identify what you're talking about. Awaz says, identify the topic. And Bahumi Chitbar says, read twice the topic. Yeah, Carolina says, read the question carefully. Um, and Hodaya Zohar says, read twice that first sentence. Yeah, students, that's absolutely it. So this first sentence, the talk about a place you went to often as a child, you have to read that twice because you really want to make sure that you're focusing on all of the elements in this part of the question. This is the key to the question. So here you're talking about a place. You're talking about a place you went to as a child. You're talking about a place you went to often, okay, as a child. So you really even do what I just did uh, because when we're nervous, and I'm sure a lot of students are nervous when they're doing their IELTS exam, it's really easy to misinterpret even simple information. So you really have to focus in on this question. So this is where you want to calm yourself, focus, read it twice. Okay. So that's my first tip here. Okay. Because too many times I listen to students talking off topic. Okay. So tip Number one, read the topic sentence of the cue card twice, okay? It is really easy to misinterpret information uh, when a person is nervous, okay? So that's my first tip, okay? All right, um, then you identify what you're talking about. So here you're talking about a place, okay? And as many of you know, you're either going to be talking about a place, a person, an object, an event, or an idea, all right? One of those five, okay? In this case, you're talking about a place. Each of the five have a very kind of set structure of ideas to clearly communicate about them, okay? So here we're talking about a place. When you talk about a place, what should you keep in mind? So, and this is the rank order, so this is the order that you should be thinking. When you're talking about a place, what should you say first? So what is the first idea you want to present to a listener when you discuss a place? Okay, before you think about kindergarten, amusement park, and so on, what do you want to discuss first about this place? Okay, so Bumi says it's location. Kyber Jan says it's location appearance. Yeah, that's right. So it's location and appearance. Okay, that's first. If you want to tell me clearly about a place that I have no idea of, the first point that you want to say is, where is it located? What does it look like? Okay, that's the first that you want to say. Okay, all right, what do you want to say second? So you explained to me where it's located. You've told me what it's looked like, what it looks like. Then what do you want to say about it? So what should you say second? Yeah, so second you want to say what happens there. It's function and the people who go there, okay? So 
So what is it used for this place and who goes there? That kind of goes together like that. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, what should you say third? So you've told me where it is. You told me what it looks like. You told me who goes there and what people do there. And then what should you do third? Okay. So what's your third set of ideas? So Bumi says maybe something about its history. Yeah, and in this case, it's meaning for you. Okay, so that would be included here, especially with this card, right? Because this card uh, is asking about a place you went to often as a child. So the history and its meaningness or its um, uh, connection to you is very, very important. Okay, so all of this has to happen in the first 90 seconds. Then if you still have time, elaborate, go into details, and give examples and opinions. Okay, don't repeat information. That's the last thing that you want to do. All right, is repeat information. Okay, so appearance, location, function, attendees, history, meaningness of the place. All right, um, what's my next step here? So next step. So far, I'm doing great. And of course, this is happening very quickly because I practiced this. I know these steps. So I've read the card. I've read the title, the topic sentence twice. Uh, I identified that it's a place. I go, okay, I got to talk about its location, appearance, function, attendees, history, meaning. I have to do this quickly. Look at the questions on the card. Uh, what's my next step? Awaz says, write some usable notes. Yeah, not yet. Boomy, very good. Boomy, I can tell you've really been studying our materials because you have a lot of the right answers. So Boomy, good for you. I, I'm picking that up, okay? Uh, by the way, students, I only um, respond to about 20, 30% of the comments that I actually read. I'm reading many, many more comments than you're probably thinking. Um, so Boomy, very good, yeah. Uh, think about three or four different possible ideas. So think of three or four, at least two, okay, possible ideas uh, to answer and choose the best one. Okay, which is the best one? It's hard to be sure, but the best one is the one that is unique and easy to discuss, okay? That, again, you have to practice at home. So now um, you can think about some places. So what are some places that you went to often as a child? Give me the first three, four places that come to mind. So Murasa says, park near my home. Let's label these. Okay. What would be another one? Uh, Nigora says family camp in the summer, okay? Ruslan says skate park. Let's see what else we have. Carolina says kindergarten. Right. Um, maybe a religious place. Vipans has a temple or a church. All right. Uh, Pachu says supermarket. Uh, Manju says grandparents' home. All right. 
Yura says amusement arcade. Okay, so lots and lots there, okay, beach. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't go there anymore. So hopefully many of your grandparents are still alive and well, and you maybe still go to grandparents' home often. But of course, you went there often as a child. That's okay. The question doesn't say talk about a place you went to often as a child that you don't go to anymore. It doesn't say that. So you can certainly talk about a place that you still go to often, and that might actually be easier because you're still very uh, clear about that place. So you have a vivid memory. You have fresh memories and ideas about that place, okay? Just make sure that you're specific. All right. I think we have a lot of good ideas here, all right? So I think park near my home is a good idea. Skate park might be a little bit tricky because it might not be the easiest to discuss what people are doing there and explaining what it looks like. So this could be quite challenging. Make sure that you're up for the challenge before you choose that one. Uh, family camp, I like it. I think it's fairly easy to talk about. I think it's unique as well. Uh, kindergarten, yeah, it's easy to talk about, but it's probably not unique, okay? I would imagine that many candidates would choose school or kindergarten as one of their top picks, all right? So I would avoid that. Grandparents' home uh, could be okay as long as you have some clear ideas of what, what's going on there. Temple is the same kind of as kindergarten, so I think a lot of students might choose a temple or a church. So here, I'm going to make the decision for us. I really like this one, summer camp, okay? So I'm gonna replace family camp here with summer camp, okay? Summer camp, summer camp. There's a lot of ways that you can go with summer camp. That's why I really uh, like this here, summer camp, okay? Summer camp, and I'm sure a lot of us have at some point in our lives attended a camp or two. We've seen lots of movies about going to summer camp. We can use our imagination for this. So let's work together, okay? Summer camp, summer camp. All right. So um, now my next step is usable notes. Okay, next step, write useful notes you should use both your notes and the cue card during the two minute speaking time okay boom, 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 boom. Uh, lots of exclamation marks there why you probably like adrian really is that necessary do you really need to put like 10 exclamation marks on that point. Um, yeah, so uh, so many times when I see students writing their notes, a lot of notes are useless. So they'll actually write summer camp on their notes. And it's like, okay, that's your topic. I'm sure you're going to remember that. I don't think you need to write down summer camp because that will be your first sentence, right? Um, and then students will write down in the summer. Yeah, I, I mean, of course, that's summer camp, right? Um, so those are useless notes. Don't waste that one minute on useless information that's in your head and, and easy to access, okay? Uh, useful notes means uh, quantitative information that's uh, a little bit less likely for you to access, okay? So think of descriptive, um, sensory, and quantitative information, okay? So descriptions, uh, I don't wanna give you all of this yet because we want to do that together. Um, but think of um, uh, descriptive language. So how would you describe it? What are some unique features of this summer camp that you can actually tell me so I can increase your lexical resource score in your speaking, okay? Um, sensory language means smell, touch, taste, okay? So I can still smell the flowers that grew in the garden and in the forest around the summer camp. So flowers at summer camp, that would be a useful, or roses, tulips, whatever they might be, daffodils, okay? 
Um, so sensory information means smell, taste, touch, hearing, okay? Hear the birds, the owls at nighttime, okay? So that. Um, no, Violet Nguyen, you cannot ask for more time. You have to do this in the one minute, okay? And uh, quantitative information, so numbers. When did you go to summer camp? What was the exact date, okay? Three weeks in August. That would be useful notes, okay? All right. Um, so useful notes. And then you should use your notes and the card during the two-minute speaking time. So many times, students, I see students writing like crazy in the one minute. And then the examiner says, okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. They take the cue card and leave it there. Or some students will even shift the cue card and the notes. And then they'll start talking for two minutes. Sometimes they get stuck for ideas and they're thinking and they're still not looking at the card. They're still not looking at their notes, probably because they're nervous. They forgot that they exist completely or something, but the examiner can't say, well, why don't you look at your notes or, Hey, uh, look at the cue card. You missed one question. So the examiner can't say that. And it's really frustrating. It's very difficult as an examiner when a student is clearly, um, nervous and they forgot about the cue card and the notes. So use them, keep them in front of you, keep them face up. And when you get stuck, or when you're organizing your, your thoughts, look at the paper, read your notes, look up and start talking, continue talking. Okay. All right. Um, so Yura, I'm glad you're being really honest about that. And I know a lot of students do it. So pay attention. Okay. All right. Um, good, good, good. So let's take some usable notes. Give me some usable notes. Let's start with appearance, okay? So with your notes, try to follow this um, uh, information here. Location, appearance, function, attendees, history. So try to follow that, okay? So Bumi says, 200 kilometers from my home. Okay, so here are our usable notes. All right, let's just move this down to the next page here. And then we'll create some usable notes. So uh, 200K from home. Okay, sure. Uh, give me some, um, uh, Navma, Vishal says, Navma Lake. Okay. Sure. Give me more. So it's summer camp, Parmar. The subject is summer camp, a place that you often went to as a child. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, Jaspreet, yeah, you should make eye contact with the examiner. You don't have to stare at the examiner like this the whole two minutes, but you should look at your notes, look at the examiner, talk to them. Okay. Uh, Ruslan, uh, forests and mountains. Okay. Forests and snow-capped mountains. All right. So Carolina is saying when. So three weeks in July. So all of this could be usable. So I'll just take July there, Carolina, and we can say three weeks in July for 10 years, six to uh, 16. So age six to 16. Okay. Uh, again, of course, shorten your notes as much as possible. Uh, now Rajvir is getting into friends. Okay. Rajvir, that's later in your notes because that's the importance for you, right? So before that you want to say what happens there. So again, location. Okay. Description of what it looks like and then what happens there. So if you're talking about uh, making friends there and the other importance for you, um, then that comes later. 
you want to explain what happens there. So what happens at summer camp? Okay. Okay, Manju says um, animal watching. And this is where, Manju, you might want to do something like deer, oops, deer, uh, eagles, owls, okay, and, and maybe even a bear, hoo-hoo, okay, I don't know, or tigers, depends on where you are in the world, of course, so think about those animals that you saw there, the plants. Um, Kyber Jan says sports, okay, uh, now sports is something that you will remember, so instead of writing sports, write words like archery, um, basketball, okay, Football, uh, cricket, okay, whatever it might be. So instead, name the sports, right? Don't just write sports, but name the sports. Uh, Rajveer, very good. Adventure games like rafting, okay? Exciting games. Okay, what else? So you have sports, okay? Don't get caught up on one point. Good Sita. Sita Nupain says, how about some other activities like music? Okay, now with music, again, don't just think music, but go into detail, playing the guitar, singing, uh, jazz songs, I don't know, uh, maybe not jazz, maybe you're singing rock or pop or campfire songs, uh, but again, be specific, right? Okay, good, and you've made a lot of friends um, that last a lifetime, uh, maybe you learned some skills. like making a fire with sticks, okay? Uh, very good, Kevin. Roasting marshmallows, telling ghost stories. Good, good, good. There you go. Now you're on your way to a band nine. All right, so we are doing fantastic. What's my next step? So I have lots of notes. Students, if you're able to write down these notes in your one minute, then I am sure you are going to be on your way to a band seven or more, okay? All right, um, so what's next? What's my next step? I have good notes, I have good ideas. I guess a lot of you are probably now realizing that, hey, yeah, summer camp would be a really good response for this uh, part two question. Um, Awaz says, write your first sentence. Yeah, absolutely. Bum, 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 bum. Again, I'm doing all of these crazy exclamation marks, like I'm screaming. I'm like, ah, get your first sentence ready. Uh, that's because so often when the examiners say, uh, okay, your one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking, students go, uh, well, um, I went to many places when I was a child, I often went to many places. Where, uh, and, and, and thank you for giving me this chance to talk about this. Oh, wow. Check that time out. I just used up 30 seconds and I've said nothing. Okay. So I'm not getting any points. All right. Uh, so your first sentence has to be quick, clear, and to the point. Okay. You basically have to get on track and move. All right. Um, so make sure you have your first sentence ready. If it helps, Write it down, okay? And I actually checked the time on students, and uh, the average time wasted um, by students is between 15 and 20 seconds. That's a lot in two minutes, okay? All right, so if it helps, write it down. Okay, uh, give me your first sentence. So um, what is a good first sentence here? I see Rajveer is already on it. Rajveer says, a place which I used to go to in my childhood is summer camp in Manali in India. Very good. Okay. So a place which I often went to as a child is summer camp. Um, I'm going to use our notes here at Navma Lake. about 200 kilometers from my home, 
Okay, good. So that is your first sentence, okay? This sentence shows the examiner right away that, hey, okay, this student read the card carefully, they have a clear idea, they chose a topic well, they've been practicing for this exam, and they're going to deliver a speech. When the examiner feels that, when the examiner feels, all right, this student is going to deliver an original speech on the right topic, you are on your way to a band nine. Okay. All right. Now, uh, stick to your strategy. Okay. So location and appearance. All right. So a place which I often went to as a child is summer camp at Navma Lake, about 200 kilometers from my home. Give me the next sentences, students. Appearance. Describe what it looks like. So Rajvir says, it is surrounded by green, lush forests. Yeah, so that's that sensory language. Green, lush forest. Lush means that it's healthy and thick. Okay, it's a thick green forest. So the lake is surrounded by... Uh, green lush forests and snow capped mountains are visible in the distance. Okay, great. Let's see what other students have given me for describing this place. Okay, we're just making this up. It's totally fine. You can be 100% imagination here. Okay. All right, so Exasan Boy says it is surrounded by mountains. Great. Uh, Preeti Yogi, don't talk about several places that you visited in your childhood and one of them is summer camp. Just talk about summer camp, okay? I don't care about the other places. I want you to just talk about one place, okay? All right, give me some more descriptive language. All right, Awaz says the uh, name of the summer camp is Happy Childhood. And that's good, Awaz. Sure, why not? Give it a name, right? Be specific. So Camp Thunderbird or Camp Tiger Roar, right? Uh, so called Camp, let's call it Camp Tiger Roar. I really like that. Okay. All right. So give me more about the description. What is at summer camp? See the summer camp in your head. There's a, a part that I'm really missing here with um, the description for this summer camp. Okay. So <clears throat> what do you find at the summer camp? I don't, I didn't see anybody mention it unless I missed it. I usually don't miss much in the chat. Um, let's see, I don't see anybody talking about it yet. What do you find at summer camp students that we're missing from the description here? I'm really missing this from the visual component and it's not the flowers. It's not the pool. Okay. Let's see. Yep. There we go, Amira Sadek, thank you. You get my two jumbo thumbs up. Um, tents and cozy sleeping bags. So yeah, come on, there's gotta be some kind of a place for people to stay and eat, right? So uh, tents or cabins and a lodge, okay? So there are a couple dozen cabins, uh, lakeside as well as a main uh, lodge for activities and meal time, right? That's what we're missing. And if you're really going fancy, you can even go into more description there. So you can say wooden cabins, okay? So, all right. Um, okay, now, good. So we have description. 
Now we can go into a little bit more of who goes there, what happens there. But in this case, be careful with this cue card. Okay. Um, I would definitely emphasize that I went there often as a child. Okay. So this is where I would put in this piece of information. Three weeks in July for 10 years from the age of six to 16. Okay. All right. So I went there every July for three weeks from the age of six to 16. All right. So now we're cooking. Now we're moving along nicely. A place which I often went to as a child is summer camp at Navma Lake called Camp Tiger Roar. Uh, students, I'm going to start that again. Uh, I want you to speak with me. Okay, so speak with me. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Venzate. I just saw your comment there. Okay, so read with me. Uh, a place which I often went to as a child is summer camp at Navma Lake called Camp Tiger Roar, about 200 kilometers from my home. The lake is surrounded by green lush forests and snow-capped mountains are visible in the distance. There are a couple dozen wood cabins, lakeside, as well as a main lodge for activities and mealtime. I went there every July for three weeks from the age of six to 16. Okay, now give me some more sentences. Now get into the people, the activities, the memories. Just go for it, okay? Let's see what you come up with. Don't be shy. Don't worry about making mistakes. I'll make corrections and add in your suggestions into the speaking. Go for it. Oh, and to help you, I'll uh, roll back to our notes here. So here's our notes. Animal watching, deer, eagles, owls, bears, archery, basketball, football, cricket, rafting, guitars, singing, jazz, songs, ghost stories, Learned skills, making a fire with sticks. Made a lot of friends. Okay. Uh, Carolina, if the camp still exists today, then it's there are. If um, the camp doesn't exist anymore, then it's there were. You can make that clear for the examiner. Okay. All right. Let's see. So Awaz says, I went there with my classmates in the middle of July because in this period, the weather was always superb and we could go swimming every day. Awaz, that works, sure. Talking a little bit. Don't go off topic though, Awaz, right? Stay on topic here. Uh, Shamil says, they conducted many activities such as cycling and adventure activities. So uh, Shamil, sure. Uh, the people who conducted them would be the organizers or the camp counselors, right? Um, there were several camp counselors who conducted, who organized and managed the kids, <laughs> managed the kids, and organized activities such as wilderness adventure hikes where I saw lots of amazing animals like owls, eagles, and even a bear one time or a tiger. It's called camp tiger roar so and even a tiger one time all right let's see what else you're coming up with uh, menaka patel says we enjoyed a lot of activities uh like mm, basketball archery and cricket uh, that's manish manish mahay says we played a variety of games yeah okay Furthermore, also, we played a variety 
of team sports like basketball, uh, cricket, and football. Okay, um, where I made lots of new friends. Sure, that's fantastic. Let's see, what else can we add? Sasan Boy says, every morning we climbed the top of a mountain. So each morning we climbed to the top of a nearby mountain and sang uh, campfire songs the whole way up. I still remember one of the camp leaders would bring and play his guitar. Sure. Okay. Doing fantastic. So we're rolling along and we've roughly reached eh, maybe 60 seconds in our speaking time as long as we're going along nice and smooth. Um, so maybe if I'm stuck here, what should I do? Uh-oh, I'm stuck. Eee, no, stuck. I'm running out of ideas. What do I do? Panic? Stare at the examiner? Uh, repeat everything that I said so far using different words? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Probably not. I think not. What should we do? Uh, Flower Sun says, read the card. Carolina says, look at your notes. Rajvir says, check your notes, check your questions. Yeah, absolutely. Students, in two minutes, it's okay to take 10 seconds to look at your notes and get some good ideas, okay? Don't start repeating yourself. Don't panic and freak out. So check the card and check your notes. All right, so important. So first check the card, okay, because you want to make sure that you're answering all of the questions on the card in the uh, first 90 seconds, maybe even a little bit less, 80 seconds. So what this place is, okay, we talked about that. Where is, oh, check, like literally in your mind, you're like, okay, check. Um, where is it located? Oop, okay, check. Uh, what can people do there? Sure, we started talking about that. Um, why you went there as a child and how do you feel about it now? Okay, we haven't really answered that question. So why did you go there as a child and what is your feeling about it now? So give me some information for that. Okay, why did you actually go there? We get an idea of the, okay, you're there and you're doing all of these fun activities, but why go there? Why did your parents send you there for so many years? Okay, what was the purpose? What was the reasoning behind this? Was it to make friends? Was it to learn life skills? Why did you go there? Okay, so what was the purpose? Why do parents, think about it, right? Why do parents send their children to these camps in the summer. So what's the logic here? Okay, and you can come up with lots of different ideas, I'm sure, but think about some of the common ones. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, Rajvir says, I love to travel in the wilderness and uh, lakeside to learn new skills. Hemant says to learn life skills and responsibilities. Okay, sure. So uh, my parents felt it important to send me to summer camp as they hoped I would learn many useful life skills. as well as become 
more responsible for my own actions as well as the actions of others. I'm just going with this, but you get the idea. All right. Let's see. Um, Asror Atabayev, in my opinion, I could get a spectacular memory. And also I learned through traveling and being independent. Very good, Asror. Yeah, independent. Nice use of that word. Uh, Sanket says, spend time with essential activities, not things, Sanket, activities, which made me happy and gave me uh, mental fortitude, mental strength, not peace, um, to use my spare time in my summer holidays wisely, okay? Not kill my spare time, Sanket. That's awkward in this situation. We only say kill time, Sanket, when it's a short time, like five minutes. So to kill time before the meeting, I played a game on my mobile phone. But we don't say kill three weeks of summertime, okay? That's awkward. All right, so careful. Kill time, that expression, just for short periods of time, okay? Uh, Preeti uh, Yogi says, I think parents send their children to summer camp because children can use, learn useful skills. Yeah, but Preeti, remember this part two is about you. So don't say why parents send their children there. Say why your parents sent you there, okay? Keep it with yourself, okay? Um, in addition, this was a great way for me to meet many new friends and participate in healthy physical activities. Okay. All right. Good. Um, so now we know why you went there, right? So why did you go there? Uh, and how do you feel about it today? Okay. Give me a couple more sentences on that. So how do you feel about this today? Yeah. My parents wanted to enjoy themselves. My parents wanted uh, a little bit of adult time without the stress of children. That's possible too. Okay. So how do you feel about it today? Haman says, this camp helped me to discover my career path as I fell in love with nature and chose to be a photographer. Yeah, so these, I feel, uh, be direct, students. So I feel very positive about this place and all of the wonderful experiences I gain there. In fact, it helped me to choose my career path as today I am a nature photographer. Sure. All right. Great. Um, Alex Joseph says, I felt the camp was uh, invaluable for every child, especially for myself. In fact, it can be the turning point for some students. Uh, students, Alex Joseph, don't go off topic, okay? It's about you, your experience. It's a place you went to often. You have to bring it back to yourself, all right? Uh, Vishal says, today I understand how important it is to take a break from the busy city life, which helps me to rejuvenate mentally and physically and be more creative for my job. Okay, that's good too. All right. So, um, and if the world is coming to an end, I feel confident that I can keep warm by making fire with two sticks and some tinder. <laughs> Let's finish on that note. Okay. All right, students. 
So uh, if you have more time, this is where you would want to elaborate, go into more detail. If not, then the examiner will stop you there anyway. Okay. So uh, let's go over this together. Speak and repeat, students. Speak and repeat with me. So again, for those who are just coming into this class, we are answering a task two cue card. The task two cue card is talk about a place you went to often as a child, what this place is, where is it located, what can people do there, why you went there as a child, and how do you feel about it now. Let's speak. For those of you who are confident and high level, don't read, just repeat. A place which I often went to as a child is summer camp at Navma Lake called Camp Tiger Roar, about 200 kilometers from my home. The lake is surrounded by green lush forests and snow-capped mountains are visible in the distance. There are a couple dozen cabins lakeside as well as a main lodge for activities and mealtime. I went there every July for three weeks from the age of 6 to 16. There were several camp counselors who organized and managed the kids and organized activities such as wilderness adventure hikes where I saw lots of amazing animals like owls, eagles, and even a tiger one time. Also, we played a variety of team sports like basketball, cricket, and football where I made lots of new friends, some of whom I'm still friends with today. Each morning, we climbed to the top of a nearby mountain and sang campfire songs the whole way up. I still remember one of the camp leaders who would bring and play his guitar. My parents felt it important to send me to summer camp as they hoped I would learn many useful life skills as well as become more responsible for my own actions as well as the actions of others. In addition, this was a great way for me to meet many new people and participate in healthy physical activities. I feel very positive about this place and all of the wonderful experiences I gained there. In fact, it helped me to choose my career path as today I'm a nature photographer. And if the world is coming to an end, I feel confident I can keep warm by making fire with two sticks and some tinder. That is your band nine cue card response for this type of question. Does it seem impossible? No, absolutely not. People can become great storytellers when they practice. Storytelling is an exceptionally useful skill in everyday life, in business, and in school. Believe me, I know. And um, for this, you have to pay attention to structure, organization, and strategy. Okay, so that's the key. Uh, you can get lots more help like this for other topics like talking about people, events, ideas, or objects from our websites. We have videos that cover these topics. Make sure to join our premium packages at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. You're very welcome, Hikmatilla. You're welcome, Pachu. Thank you, students, for your contributions in today's chat. I couldn't have done it without you. And I wish you a fantastic rest of your weekend and a great start to your week. I will be back on Wednesday with speaking part one at the same time. Much love to all of you. Take care, believe in yourselves, and push forward. Bye for now.